This is professional wrestler Chris Rex, and you're listening to the Playmakers Blog Podcast, my only destination for sports talk radio. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a special episode of the Playmakers Blog Podcast. It's been a while since the Playmakers has done a podcast episode besides the best on the mic. And I am here, your host, Daniel, the Playmaker, sounds out from Jacksonville, Florida. Here just to give you a special. We're just going to talk some football stuff. We're going to talk some basketball stuff. And we're going to go ahead and get up out of here. And so without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump right into it. We're going to start off talking some football. We're going to talk NFL because uh, whew, Patrick Mahomes, that deal, he just is, he signed. A whopping 10-year contract extension worth $450 million. So it's an extension with me is added to his previous contract, which gives it a grand total of a 12-year with a maximum earning of $503 million with Four hundred and seventy-seven million in guaranteed incentives. So, the real the real thing is, a hundred and forty million is automatically guaranteed to this man. But the rest of the contract can be earned with incentives and if he's other stuff has happened. Look, the man just came off winning the Super Bowl. The man just come off. We're in the final uh, Super Bowl MVP. And this man's contract is ridiculous. Patrick Mahomes is a half a billion dollar man. If everything plays out correctly. But at the same time, I think I seen it on Twitter. The cap hit for the Kansas City Chiefs for this upcoming season. Don't put 30000 after this contract. What? This means the Kansas City Chiefs can keep their team, can keep their Super Bowl team. It means look out. We might be, we could be on the verge of a dynasty here because of this contract and the way that they split it out over 10 years. Like, come on, man. Um, They had a press conference on Tuesday talking about it. And Coach Andy Reese has a win-win, which I don't see, I don't see, I don't see no difference. I don't see a disagreement. It's a win for the player because, hey, the man getting his paid. The man's getting paid. And it's a win for the because like, they ain't losing much in cap. They can keep building. They can build a dynasty if they really want to now. Like, look, this man here, Patrick Mahomes, is out this world. We know this. We seen in the first two the first two seasons that he became the starting quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs. The man is unbelievable. Twenty eighteen NFL MVP, and then twenty nineteen, as I just mentioned earlier, he won the Super Bowl and was Super Bowl MVP. The man does great things. The man is is a magician, and he just got the richest contract in sports history. Like he has a twelve year deal, over half a billion. And money. Like, who does that? Usually, these, he, Patrick Mahomes has baseball money in a football league. That's pretty much what it is. Because they showed it on Get Up on ESPN. The, the other three guys who have double-digit contracts. All three of them in baseball. One of the main ones is Mike Trout, who signed his 12-year deal that is worth $426.5 million contract for the Los Angeles Angels. Like Patrick Mahomes is just set the bar. Matter of fact, he ain't even set the bar because ain't nobody, you know, I don't see nobody else getting this kind of money. Lamar Jackson, he might get somewhere at the three million, maybe four million. Not, not no half a billion. I don't see Lamar Jackson. I don't see Deshaun Watson getting this kind of money. I matter of fact, I need to get Deshaun Watson out of Houston because I don't know what Brielle Bryan got going on down there in Houston, Texas. That Prescott, he just signed a, a franchise. Tag for thirty one million this upcoming season. I don't see him getting paid nowhere close to that, especially with Jerry Jones. That's a whole nother issue with the Cowboys that I might speak on later. I don't know yet. But anyway, 
the Kansas City Chiefs, they got their franchise quarterback for the long haul. They got him they got him to at least 2031. Mahomes, he got his money. He not only he got his money, he got his family money, he got his grand he got his kids' money, he got his grandkids' money, he got his great great grandkids' money. He has about four generations worth of money. That's how ridiculous this contract is. This man can take care of four generations off this one contract. And everybody set for life. Now you gotta do nothing. Go to school, get your education, get your college degree, build something for yourself. But you got the money. You got the money. Patrick Mahomes is a made man. I don't blame him. Plus, he he signed this kind of contract during the pandemic. Like COVID nineteen is still going on, and this man is and the kids in Chiefs decided, hey, let's go ahead and pay you now. Just go ahead and get it out the way. Can I be like Patrick Mahomes to people? Can I, can, can I be like Patrick Mahomes, please? I, I really want to be like Patrick Mahomes right now. I want to be able to sign a stupid behind deal like this and say, shoot, my great, great, great grandkids I take taken care of. I'm good. <laughs> Patrick Mahomes, man. What can you say? The man, is he worth it? I believe so. I believe he's worth it. I know we had a Twitter poll on our Playmakers Blog Twitter page. We had a Twitter poll out there. And uh, to see how people felt about the deal. Let me go to it right now and, and see what it says. And all the votes that we got in, everybody agreed. Everybody think it was worth it. I can't blame him. Patch my homes. The man, the man deserved the, the man has done a crazy thing. But he only has one Super Bowl. He only has one now. He only has one. We saying we we saying we don't have a problem with it. We saying we agree with it. But 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 time will tell because Tom Brady never come close to that kind of money in New England, and he has six Super Bowls. One, two, three, four, five, six Super Bowls by Tom Brady and New England Patriots, and Tom Brady ain't never get close to that kind of money. Never close to that kind of money in New England. So time will tell in the next decade. Of how Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs will go down on in history on this contract right here. On this contract right here, because let me tell you something. This contract right here is crazy. It's crazy. But there is something that people is that some people looked into. It kind of caught my eyes because there's some things in this contract. They need to be looked at. So, let me see what did I see it. I think I seen it on ESPN. Let me make sure I'm right. Yep, on ESPN. As we sit here and look at it, Bill Barnwell. As and this article is on ESPN.com, by the way. He says he might very well make more than five hundred million over the next twelve years, but the chances that the two side choose to ride this deal all the way out to twenty thirty one are low. The structure of the deal, the the history of the quarterback contracts, and the recent path of salary caps all suggest that the Chiefs and their star are aren't likely to see the final few years of this contract on the current terms. Now, that says a lot. I need. To, that says a lot. So let's see what it says. For this deal to play out as planned to its conclusion, Mahomes would need to be just good enough to justify these massive walks of bonus without being good enough to justify a new extension. More realistically, he will play out a portion of this deal and then earn a new extension down the line well before 2031. The structure of this deal makes me think that it would be. That it will end up as a six year, $183.4 million before the two side negotiate a new contract after the 2025 season finishes, which will reduce $319.2 million of this deal to pay money. So 2025 could be the hold up in this whole 12 year contract that he got. You got an extension. You got an extension. But, you know, we're going to see. 
We gonna see, cause this man is getting paid. So we don't, we don't know what all of the senses, we don't know all the details was in the contract, but man, if this contract makes it through this deal, we talking half a billion dollar man here in Patrick Mahomes for the Kansas City Chief. But as I just read on ESPN.com. 2025 can tell the tale if this country is going to make it through or not. Five years. Five years now. Five years. In five years, we're going to see. Time will tell, though, because you, you, my fact, speaking of the number five, you five championships away from catching New England. Tom Brady, you got one. You need five more. So we're going to see. We're going to see. But it's one, that's one hell of a country. That is one hell of a country that you got there, sir. But time will tell. And you got to do in the pandemic, which is even more amazing. You got to do a COVID-19 pandemic where there's no sports, really. Like, how does that happen? Talk about favor of God. That man got it. I don't care what y'all say. That man got favor on his life. I ain't here to judge him. I'm just saying the man got favor on his life. That's all I got to say on that. So, uh, as far as other stuff in the NFL... Uh, it looks like NFL still gonna do things. They still gonna keep everything going. Uh, they shut the preseason the two games, I believe. They took out the Hall of Fame game and they took out the uh, first two weeks of preseason. The NFL PA they don't want no games. That is true. They don't want no games. Uh, we gonna see because uh, if everything goes according to plans, like the NFL wanted. The season should sure start on time, which is in September. But we're gonna see. Cause man, we talk we, we we talking we talking we talking big games to to start off the weekend, week one in the NFL. Just let me pull this up real quick and and, and look at the games real quick, because this is a good game. You talking about September tenth was the original start. For the 2020 season. We're talking about Deshaun Watson and Houston Texas going against that half a billion dollar man we just talked about in Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City. As they raise up that banner for the Kansas City Chiefs, that Super Bowl banner, ring ceremony and everything. That's the night. I mean, ooh. Can we get there? We in July. We still got to get through the rest of July and, and, and August just to be sure we can get some NFL football. But... If we do, the song watching Hatching My Homes at it again. Now the last they met twice and they met twice in a, they met twice last season. The first one the song watching got Patrick Mahomes, but in the playoffs we, we kinda remember the Sean Watson and Texan was up twenty and they lost by twenty. Yeah. And that's the playoffs. Ugh. But we'll see. Man, what else we talking? We 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 talking about with Tom Brady out out in the east and Cam Newton. Sign up with New England Patriots. Let's not forget about it. Cam Newton is with New England Patriots. A lot of people were saying Cam Newton probably need to go to New England. I didn't want New England. I didn't want to go to New England. Everybody. If you know me well enough, you know I can't stand the Patriots. I can't stand Bill Belichick. I can't stand the Patriots. Well, I can't stand none of that crap. But Cam Newton, he, he's, he's, he's in the NFL. I'm happy for him. I'm, I'm glad that he had Cam, but I did not want your ass in the Patriots uniform. You could have been in any 30 teams besides Carolina, besides Carolina, because you don't want to play for them, and they release you. There's no point of going back. And New England, you can put any of the other 30 teams. I don't care. You can, you, I don't care. He doesn't want you in New England. But you in New England, we're going to see. You got a battle Jason Stidham or Jared Stidham for the quarterback position and Brian Hoyt. But who believes Brian Hoyt is going to get the starting job in New England? Let's just be for real. It's really pretty much Jared Stidham versus Cam Newton to be the following starter. Behind after Tom Brady left, who's gonna wore the shoes of TB12 as TB12 took his behind down to Temple to play with the Buccaneers? So, that being said, you got the New York Jets and the Buffalo Bills up and up in week one, Green Bay and Minnesota open up in week one. Come on, we got Aaron Rodgers versus Cut Cousins out the gate. We're gonna have the Atlanta Falcons hosting the Seattle Seahawks out the gate. What? The Bucks and the Saints getting at it. Tom Brady versus Drew Brees right out the gate. Come on. This is week one we're talking about here. And my personal favorite, the damn Dallas Cowboys taking the ass to LA to take on my rents as we open up SoFi Stadium. I knew I knew billion dollar stadium or million dollar stadium. 
I could be wrong either way. But I knew Stadium out in L.A. And the Cowboys, the team we get opening up with on Sunday night football. As usual, your two Monday night games. You got the Giants and the Steelers. Interesting. The t- Titans and the Broncos. I'm just saying. We got some good games for you. If we can make it there. Question is, can we make it there through this pandemic? That's the question that needs to be answered. So, if we're getting football, there's going to be a lot to talk about. So, let me take a break here, give you a word from my sponsors, and when I come back, we're going to talk NBA. What's up? How's it going? You already know my voice. You know who I am. This is Donna the Playmaker Sounds from the Playmaker Survive Podcast. And you know, I just want to take some time and talk about Anchor FM as we've been using Anchor FM for over two years now, and it's been very good to us, it's been very great for us. So those of you who are trying to get into the podcast world and you need a hosting platform and you don't have the budget and you want to do something free just to try it out to see where you at, try Anchor FM. Anchor is the one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. That means you can get paid right away. So when you hear this, you know, sounds good enough but give it i'm telling you right now give it a shot anchor fm by it being free it gives you opportunity to step into the podcasting world and let you do your own thing so if you want to give it a shot and you want to try to make some money or just do podcasting as a hobby go to anchorfm.com slash start to get started right away and remember once you get started hit us up at the playmakers bar so we can listen to you at the show good luck All right, we're back. We thought our NFL talk, but now let's get to the NBA. Let's talk some basketball, shall we? So we all know the NBA, along with MLB, will be the first two leagues to do a restart and see if we can have sports do a pandemic. The NBA, they will be starting up on July 30th with 22 teams invited down to Orlando, Florida for the Bubbles games. And how we see it is training camps. Teams I should be rolling to Orlando right about now. They'll take some couple of days to quarantine, take tests and all that other stuff. They'll do something like a training camp stuff and get in the NBA shape, stuff like that. And then on the 22nd through the 28th, there'll be scrimmage games. And the way these scrimmage games are going to work is that... I think all teams will get like three scrimmage games. All every, every all twenty two teams will get like three scrimmage games that will stretch out from the twenty second through the twenty eighth, just to get them in basketball shape, to get them in the in the rhythm and flow of getting being back on the court, being back into NBA shape, getting things rocking and rolling and stuff like that. The the teams that are joining this group out of the East, you have the Milwaukee Bucks. The Toronto Raptors, the Boston Celtics, the Miami Heat, Indiana Pacers, the Philadelphia 76ers, the Brooklyn Nets, the Orlando Magic, and the Washington Wizards. Nine teams out in the East. Thirteen out in the West, led by the Los Angeles Lakers and the Los Angeles Clippers, the Denver Nuggets, the Utah Jazz, Oklahoma City Thunder, the Houston Rockets, Dallas Mavericks, Memphis Grizzlies, Portland Trailblazers, New Orleans Pelicans, Sacramento Kings, Antonio Spurs, and the Phoenix Suns. So that's that's what that's how those were the teams that will be competing to get into the playoffs. Even though most of them are already there. They are still keeping the conference versus conference playoff matchup. This so the games it just will be eight eight games will be played for each team before the playoffs begin. So, with that being said, as I said, the scrimmage games will get in the shape. They will be played at the ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex down in Walt Disney World, stuff like that. There will be no fans in attendance, pretty much. All, everybody who's going into the bubble is going to be right out their family for pretty much almost three months. Close to three months. So, we talking eight games starting from July 30th. To August 17th, because the first round begins August 17th. Conference finals, conference semifinals to begin on at the end, at the end of August, August 31st. 
And then the finals are set to begin September 15th, but the NBA finals being finalized on September 30th. But there's an option that the finals can go all the way up to October 15th. If I remember correctly, I think it said October 15th. But they they don't want to go they don't want to go too far along. So they gave themselves a room just in case they have to. Just to make sure they get a finish to the season. Yeah. So July 30th is the start date. The finals will end no later than October 13th. So they wanted to end at the end of September, but if they have to, they'll push it back to the 13th of October. Now they still working on protocol, they're still working out languages and stuff like that. They couldn't do the number wave of how you get into the playoffs because each team has played a different amount of games. So instead they are going by winning presenting. So it so as it as it has it here on NBA.com, it, it varies by team, but most of the twenty two teams will play seventy two or seventy three games after the eight after the eight after the eight seeding games are added to the regular seven. So with everything added, the Dallas Mavericks would have to play the most because they would have been at seventy-five, and the uh, Lakers and Spurs would have been at the least because they had played seventy-one altogether. So this is how the playoffs will be worked: seven teams in each conference with the best record, regular season and season games, will have clinched their playoff spot. the The usual tiebreaker scenario will be will be in place for those seeds. The A seed. Could potentially come down to a play-in tournament, and what do they mean by play-in tournament? If the team with the AC with the eighth best record in its conference is within four games, is 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 more than four games ahead of all the other teams, especially the team right behind them in the same conference. No plans there. But if the AC team in the conference has a four-game or less lead on the nice seeded team. There will be a play-in, and in the play-in, the AC team will have to beat the nine C team one time, but the nine C has to beat them twice to get in. That's how the playoff tournament will begin. So let's say, for instance, right now the Memphis Grizzlies are in the A spot in the Western Conference right now, and right behind them is the Portland Trail Blazers. So if that, if that's everything stay status quo, the Grizzlies will have to beat the Trail Blazers only one time to keep their spot. And make the playoff, but the Trailblazers will have to beat the Memphis Grizzlies twice to get the A spot. That's what they came up with on it. Eh, some like it, some don't. It is what it is. But hey, pretty much what they're saying is, if you're the nine seed team and you're trying to get that A spot from them, beat them twice and get in. But if you're the AC and you have to play the play again, that's win one game. That's all they're saying. They just telling the AC you already have to spot. Just win one game. Like, it's the nice seed, and you're good. The nice seed has to beat you twice. So if you lose the first one, you can beat them in the second one and still get in. But if you lose both, then the nice seed becomes eight seed. So that's that. So the playoffs will be the same, East versus West. The same six, the same format. Same format as usual. One through eight on the East, one through eight on the West. And we're going to find out who's going who's gonna to be the champion. The NBA draft, which does take place within within the middle of the playoffs, will be will be on August twenty fifth. So those who are entering the NBA draft and those who are interested in seeing who gets drafted, August twenty fifth is your date for the NBA NBA lottery, not the draft. Not, excuse me, not the draft, the lottery. NBA lottery is that August twenty. It's August twenty fifth. Uh, the NBA draft, however, NBA draft August is October sixteenth. So, let me say that again to clarify. The lottery, to see who gets number one through five in all those picks that we usually do, August 25th. The NBA draft, August 26th. And just the thing with the NBA draft. The early entry deadline will be August 17th, and the early withdrawal deadline will be August 6th. So, players from college and around the world, they can, they can put their names into the draft as early as August 17th. If they want to redraw, they have until October the 6th to withdraw. So you have about a good three weeks to make your mind up. Do I want to go in the NBA draft? Do I want to stay where I'm at and do something else? So you have that time for you. 
August 17th to October 6th. That's your time period to see if you want to play in the NBA or get drafted or not. So I'd like to go through in this protocol. The free agent period of the 2021 free agency period doing all this will begin on the 18th of October. As usual. And it could see it could see you on the teams can well they can they can begin negotiating 6 p.m. on the 18th. Let me let me read it straight here. Teams and free agents can begin negotiating at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, October 18th, which is a six hour before the annual mantra. The mantra will begin 12.01 a.m. October 19th and will continue to through noon of October 23rd. That's that. And then if you look into when would the new season begin, the actual new season for the NBA would be the 2021 season. That will begin most likely December 1st. They say most likely because they don't know how things going to work out. So they saying the, the beginning of December is the likelihood of the 2021 season. So keep that in mind and everything. Right now, uh, we got players that's not playing. We got players that's... It's, this. I'm just going to say this right now, so... Spencer Dinwiddie, the, Bur- the, the Brooklyn Nets are taking the most. Let me say this: the Brooklyn Nets are taking the most hit for this restart because Kevin Durant ain't participating, Kyrie Irving ain't participating, and then come to find out, Chandler is not participating, and then Deion, I mean not Deion, DeAndre Jordan and Spencer Dinwiddie both tested positive. For the coronavirus. Right away, DeAndre Jordan said, I got I tested positive. I'm not playing. Spencer did really, however, took him a while. And he just now this week said he's not playing. So that is one. We got Spencer Denwood, DeAndre Jordan, Chandler, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant. That's five players. They have another player, they have six players, uh Claxton, who is out with soldier surgery. He's out. That's six players for the Brooklyn Nets that's not joining them in Orlando. They are, and they are the seven C right now. They still fighting to get. They still fighting to solidify this fight. This fight is not even solidified. And then you go down. Victor Ola people, he's not playing. Michael Markham Barton, he tested positive for coronavirus, but no worry if he's playing or not. So we'll see. Derrick Jones Jr. for the Miami Heat, he tested positive. But no word if he's gonna join the team in Miami, I mean in Orlando or not. Let me get down to the results. They added Jaron Grant, which is good. Barton, he plans on sitting out to restart. John Wall is not coming back. And then to top it off, this week we found out Bloody Bill won't be playing in the restart. The Washington Wizards. All right, Trump. They're not going to have neither one of their superstars in Bradley Bill nor John Wall for the restart. There's only, there's only somebody got to get the A spot. And right now, it's looking good for Orlando to at least to move up a spot. My, and I love my magic, but it's looking good for y'all to move up a spot and get away from Milwaukee. Because Brooklyn is hurting. The Wizards is hurting. Other than that, you're looking at Milwaukee at the top, Toronto right behind them. Boston Celtics at third, Miami Heat fourth, Indiana Pacers fifth, and, and the Philadelphia Seven Sisters six. That's gonna be your top six seeds right there, unless something, unless one of them like Indiana collapse, and Philly, Philly can't collapse too. Cause I mean, I said this, I said this to somebody before. Like Philly really don't want it, like the rest of them do. Milwaukee wants it. Giannis wants to, wants to be a champion. Uh, Toronto, they want to be a champion again, despite losing Kawhi Leonard. Uh, Boston Celtics, they want to be champion. They know what it's like to be a champion. They want that feeling again. The Miami Heat, Jimmy, but them boys won't. They want it. Does the Philadelphia 76ers want it? That's my question going into the restart. Do the Philadelphia, led by Ben Simmons and Joel B, do they want it? We're going to see on, when July 30th gets here. We're going to see. When they play these games. We gonna see if they want it. Cause that's my question. Do they want it? It's great that the restart is in Orlando. 
We made my magic get home court advantage, but we don't have the horsepower. We don't have the horsepower to compete with Milwaukee, to to compete with Miami, to compete with Boston, to compete with. Well, we might can compete with Toronto. We might can. We might compete compete with Philly, but when it's all said and done, I mean, I, I don't see, I don't see us winning it. If I'm being honest, I really don't. I don't see Orlando winning the whole thing. And anything can happen. I mean, like the only team with a home court advantage is Orlando, but I really don't see it coming out of the East. If anything, I like to me right now. I like Milwaukee and Boston to meet up in the East Finals. <laughs> See who goes to the finals. That's that's my pick right there. If I'm being honest, if I'm being completely honest, that's my pick. And then we get to the West Conference, which is the West Conference is always better. It's just always better. But let's go. Let's go to the West side and see what we got going on. Uh, Connie Styles is out for the Mavericks, and that's that's it for them. Denver Nuggets, Yogi's that's the positive, but no word if he's stepping out or not. Assistant coach for the for the Nuggets is he won't be it. He won't be joining the team in Orlando. Let's see. Nothing for the Rockets. Shamit for the Clippers. He won't be joining the team for the for the uh restart. I remember that. I actually caught that on Facebook. The Clippers they add all two time all star Joe Kim Newell, so they beefing up that front line, man. Oh, they coming for the Lakers. And speaking of the Lakers, every Bradley. He's not playing, and they signed J.L. Smith to to uh, replace him. Uh, I don't know if that's gonna work or not. We'll see. The White House says he is in. He will be returning to Atlanta, but he's gonna be in the Lakers uniform again. One of the assistant coaches for the Los Angeles Lakers. He won't be joining the team for the restart. So that's that. Uh, nothing going on with the Grizzlies. Nothing going on with the Pelicans of note. Even though the Pelicans had three players tested positive for the coronavirus, but nobody has announced of not playing or whatnot. Oklahoma City Thunder, nothing of note. The Phoenix Suns, Aubrey Jr. tore his meniscus and he's out for he he's out for the restart. That's that's kind of a Aubrey Jr. came from Washington over to Phoenix. And that's kind of a hit to them. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Let's see. Portland. Trevor Ariza, he's out for the restart, and he's about to spend time with his family. So Trevor Ariza will not be joining the Portland Trail Brothers in the restart. Buddy here, laying in pocket for the Sacramento Kings. They all tested positive, but no word if they plan or not. So let's stay right on that. And the San Antonio Spurs, Aldridge, the Marcus Aldridge, this is a big, this is a blow to the San Antonio Spurs. They would not have the Marcus Aldridge. Because of shoulder surgery. He has surgery on his shoulder, so the Marcus Argers would not be playing with the Spurs. He would not be joining them. So probably when Greg Poppins will be there. I'm about to pray for Greg Poppins because the coronavirus is something serious. I need I need Pop to stay healthy. Uh Bondon Donovan's for the Utah Jazz. He is out for the remainder of the season after having whist. That's a three pointer loss for the Utah Jazz with Spider Mitchell and that crew right there. So in the West. You have 13 teams in the rest. Let's think about this. We know both LA teams getting in. So the Lakers and the Clippers, that's one and two right now. The Nuggets behind them at three. The Utah Jazz at four. Oklahoma City Thunder is at five. Chris Paul has led the Oklahoma City Thunder to the fifth seed right now, which is like amazing in itself. Right behind them is the Houston Rockets, as a matter of fact. Uh, so y'all flip. Y'all flip CP3 and Russell Westbrook. And you telling me OKC has a better record than Houston right now? Or in a better seating position than Houston right now? What is going on here? I'm going to leave it right there. Dallas Mavericks is at the 7th seed. And the Memphis Grizzlies are at the 8th seed. So, we potentially are looking at Memphis, Portland, the Pelicans, the Sacramento Kings, San Antonio Spurs, and the Phoenix Suns battling for the 8th spot. Six teams <laughs> battling for one spot, essentially. This is pretty much what it said. Six teams about it. Let me look at these. I got to look at these standards. That's six teams about it from one spot. All right, let's look at it. In the East, uh, in the East, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, six spots remaining. Yeah, six spots clinched. So, Milwaukee, Toronto, Boston, Miami, 
Indiana, and Philadelphia all clinched in the East. So that leaves seven and eight spots fighting for between three teams. So my Orlando should already, I'm going to say it again, Orlando should automatically get in. If they don't get in and they lose out to Brooklyn and Washington, somebody needs to be fired. Because Brooklyn is out for six players. Washington ain't have, don't have none of their star players because Bill ain't playing. John Wall ain't playing. So Orlando is fully loaded and ready to go. You should be the seventh seed, and most likely you probably going to have to play Toronto. It is what it is. But y'all should be the seventh seed. Y'all should be them. There's no way Orlando should not make the playoffs in their backyard. I'm just going to put that out there. Now, let me get to the weird reason why I want to get Santa because I'm looking at the West. So far, both LA teams have clinched. Denver's clinched. Utah's clinched. OKC is clinched. And the Houston Rockets have clinched. So now, by the way, these teams have clinched. But the seeding isn't in order yet. Nobody has clinched top spot or that spot. The seeding is still need to be filled, even though these teams have clinched. So, Dallas, Memphis, Portland, New Orleans, Sacramento, San Antonio, and Phoenix. Seven teams battling for two spots in the West. This is what we this is what we're looking at right now. Seven teams battling for two spots in the West. This is going to be interesting here. I like Dallas. I like Luka Doncic and the Mavericks. Shout out to Alex the Bell Test. I know he's a Dallas fan. He's a Mavericks fan. I'm going to shout him out because I like I like I I, I like the Mavericks. I think the I think the Mavs going 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 to find a way to stay within the playoff ranks. I got the main thing we're looking at Memphis with John Morant. We're looking at Portland with obviously Damian Lee. and we're looking at the Pelicans with Zion Williamson. Which of these guys are going to be in the playoffs? Will one get in? Will two get in? You know, most people think Memphis Memphis going to have enough to get. But Memphis had the toughest schedule coming in, though. Like, this scheduling for Memphis is... I'm just putting that out there. Like That schedule is something else. That's the same. I'm just saying. So you have to see, you have to see how that's going to look. Because that's... Memphis have a tall, hard, hard by our schedule. I mean, you coming out, but like you coming out the gate playing. Well, let me find Memphis schedule. Your first game out the gate, which be on the the thirty first, is against the Portland Trailblazers. The Trailblazers, you have the Trailblazers out the gate, a team that's fighting for your spot right now, Bruh. Nah. And that's the team that's right behind you right now. They, you're the AC. Important is the nine seed. And then you got to play San Antonio to, after that. Then, then Zion Williamson. Then Utah. Then OKC. U.S. loaded. The team you play in the East is Toronto. Then Boston. Milwaukee. Bruh. Look at this. The only teams you play in the East. It's pretty much the top two teams. That's the top three. The top three teams. Toronto, Boston, and Milwaukee. Dude. Memphis got they Memphis gotta cut it out. Memphis got their work cut out for them. I ain't I'm not gonna lie to you. But yo, as we get closer, I would dive into more of the scheduling. I'm just saying though. Memphis has a whew, that's a tough. That is tough. Portland, San Antonio, New Orleans, Utah, OKC, Toronto, Boston, Milwaukee. I'm just saying, that's that's a lot to deal with right there. That is a lot. But hey, you know, as we get closer and closer, I will be back and I will talk more NBA stuff and things like that. So, but yo, that's gonna be hard. I just thank y'all taking taking a little bit of time out your out your day. Listen to listen to me talk some football stuff, patching my own stupid behind contract and whatnot. I will want to I will want to shout out to the NBA and what they are doing to bring knowledge into systemic racism in in this country, putting back going with Black Lives Matter on on the court 
on every court being played in this restart. The video that they did, the the opportunity for players to put messages on their jersey instead of their own name. Shout out to WNBA who who came out, who, who's going to do, when they do their restart, they're going to have jerseys for every player. That says Black Lives Matter and on the back that says, say her name, referencing to Breonna Taylor who was unfortunately murdered due to a no not one in Louisville, Kentucky. But and the jersey's gonna have Brianna Taylor's name on it for everybody playing in the restart, which is good to see. Thankful for the thankful for the NBA and WNBA for taking notice on that. Um Jerry Jones and the NFL. But y'all got coming up because Jerry Jones been quiet. Stephen they called him out. Don Terry Poe has called Jerry Jones out. Greg Joy McCoy called Jerry Jones out. Like these owners of the NFL, they need to step it up because these owners in the NBA, they they standing behind their players and they stand behind these calls. What's the NFL gonna do? I need to know what the NFL go. I know y'all talking about playing the Black National Anthem, which is lift every voice. Yeah, that's a, eh, that's a start. But we need some concrete evidence right about now. I'm gonna sound like Stephen A. Smith right now. We need some concrete evidence from the NFL. Jerry Jones, you need to speak up. That's plain and simple. Even East Stephen A. will come to Dallas for you just so you can speak up. I need these owners to speak up in the NFL because the NBA ain't playing. I need the NFL to take the same approach. With that being said, uh, if y'all if y'all been a part of the best on the mic voting matches, continue to do that. We about to finish up round one. We still got a couple of matches to go to finish up round one before we get into round two. We'll be doing episode three in about a week, about a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks out. Uh, myself, Bear, Texas, Alex Kazar, and Sports Wave Dre, and my boy Dre, they will be doing episode three, recapping the first round and looking forward into the second round. Can't wait for that. But other than that, uh, check, get ready to look out for. Speaking of the Bear, Texas, he got his own podcast with us. He's going to be doing Cowboys Talk, so he's going to be talking all about the Cowboys. And then his original podcast, which is the Bear of Texas, it's part of the Playmakers blog. He, he'll he do his usual stuff on there. Mm, soccer, basketball, whatever, whatever. He'll be doing that on there, but it's part of the Playmakers blog. Now, I will be having my own NFL podcast called Ramley Talk. All L.A. Rams podcast, man. I'm going to talk, talk L.A. Rams. I'm getting to some of the NFL stuff. I'm going to do my usual picks and stuff like that. But I'm looking forward to it, doing my own thing like I just did on this one and see how that goes for me. Uh, me and Dallas, we still together. We we still partners, but we just going to focus. I'm, Dallas just want to focus on college football, so me and Dallas will be doing college football together, as usual. We're going to look see if the college football season does start. We're still going to do our group of five, top five list. But we're going to have more of a set of rules for that. We're going to be set in stone for that one. We're going to do our usual college football talk, do our picks and stuff like that. And then I got a new I got a new way of doing NBA and college basketball. So I'm putting them together. It's called Hoops Talk. Probably makes a podcast, Hoops Talk. So I'm doing both NBA and college. I'm gonna put them, I think I'm gonna put them together and do some things with that. But other than that, uh we got two online stores. We got a threadless store and we have a uh spread shirt store. I'm gonna put both links into the into the episode description. So y'all can check both of those out. Get your merch. Get your Playmakers blog merch. Continue, continue to support us because we enjoy y'all support. Thank y'all for listening in. Thank y'all for joining me on today. Y'all enjoy the rest of y'all day. Enjoy the rest of y'all week. I'll be back in a couple of weeks to do either or or both. Best on the mic and who's talk. So check y'all later.